If you can't beat them, bury them. With the UK emerging as a competitor after Brexit, the EU is acting vindictively. And now the UK is faced with a possible £160 billion debt. The United Kingdom has caused irreparable harm to the European Union, first with the Brexit and then by beating the European Union in terms of trade deals. A vindictive EU is now trying to ramshackle the UK by burdening it under a humongous £160 billion debt mountain. The European Investment Bank and the European Financial Stability Mechanism has doled out hundreds of billions in loans, some of them financing investment projects in the fragile economies of 27 EU members. London's share of liability here stands around 12%. Experts believe that the United Kingdom's share of liability could come out to be around £160 billion in unpaid loans as opposed to the £39 billion divorce settlement between the UK and the EU. Moreover, it is feared that the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftershocks could push the UK's liability even further as economies are slipping into recession and governments are getting cash-strapped. With the EU drawing a loan bill four times the size of the divorce agreement, senior Tories have urged Prime Minister Boris Johnson to reopen the withdrawal agreement and remove London's liability. Senior Tories want a clean break from the Brussels-based intergovernmental bloc by December 31 when the transition period ends. Former Tory leader and leading Brexit supporter Ian Duncan Smith told The Sun, we would basically be bootstrapped to Europe for the foreseeable future. He added, if people thought we were only paying £39 billion, they can forget it. We've got a potential bill of £160 billion and Covid could raise that massively. He also added that, this would lock us into the EU's debt mountain. The European Union's latest bid to bury the UK under a debt pile comes on the heels of the UK beating the EU in a race for trade deals. Recently, India and the United Kingdom worked out an enhanced trade partnership as a precursor to the larger free trade agreement between the two countries. Ian Duncan Smith took to Twitter to say, whilst the UK wants to have a good trade relationship with the EU as a sovereign state, the EU has different ideas. They want our money and they want to stop us being a competitor. The withdrawal agreement we signed last year sadly helps them. India's progress on a free trade deal with the UK means that the India-EU free trade talks have been given a cold shoulder. India has developed cold feet towards Brussels after the latter irked New Delhi with innate resolutions on issues like Article 370 abrogation and the Citizenship Amendment Act. Other countries like the US, Canada, Japan, Australia and New Zealand, with whom the UK shares long-standing cultural, political and business ties, much like the Indo-UK relations, are also inclined to sign free trade deals with the UK at the expense of the European Union. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has antagonized the US with her pro-China stance and therefore an EU-US free trade deal also looks unlikely. Moreover, the sluggish economic growth and lethargic bureaucracy of the Brussels-based supranational organization makes it an unattractive destination. The United Kingdom was about to beat the EU ruthlessly in the free trade agreements race. Therefore, the EU weaponized the withdrawal agreement finalized between the EU and the UK last year. Ian Duncan Smith said, To avoid their own budget black hole, the EU gets £39 billion as a divorce payment from us, reflecting our share of the current EU budget. But it gets worse. Buried in the fine print, unnoticed by many, is the fact that we remain hooked into the EU's loan book. The UK has come to realize that the devil lies in the details insofar as the withdrawal agreement is concerned. The EU is using the withdrawal agreement to tie Britain with loans for several decades to come and defeat the very purpose of Brexit, that is avoiding control from Brussels and becoming truly sovereign from the intergovernmental bloc. What the EU is doing with the UK is setting an example by imposing exemplary costs for leaving the European Union. The European Union understands that it is a divided bloc. Countries like Italy are fed up with the EU, especially at a time when Germany has blocked the issuance of corona bonds to rescue the COVID-ravaged economies. Moreover, Angela Merkel's pro-China stance has marginalized countries like Sweden and Estonia that are handling nasty diplomatic spats with China. 
With shocking debt trouble mounting on the UK, the message from Brussels is loud and clear. If you leave the EU, you will be faced with a painful ordeal and burdened under the weight of debt piles.